This episode of On the Line is presented to you by Living.Fit, your one stop for all your fitness needs. Make sure you go download the app Living.Fit today. Now here's the show. Welcome to On the Line. Today is Tuesday, October 4th. We got a great show today. Hopefully coming out on time. My computer doesn't die on me again for the second show in a row. But uh, we got a great show for you guys. We got Joe Pfeiffer on the program in our interview. Just quick heads up. That was also the day my laptop died. So if it just abruptly ends, that's why my laptop kind of died on me all day on Thursday. It ruined a lot of things. Very stressful. But anyway, great interview with Joe Pfeiffer for the little bit we had him. Uh, once we wrote with Joe, we go over UFC Vegas 61, Xiaoyan Nan and uh, Mackenzie Dern. It was, uh, you know, it was a card call it that call it a card but we go over that give her bonuses for all that uh and then we wrap up with our winners and losers for the week and go over the world of sports but without further ado listen on youtube hit that subscribe button listen apple spot if it is or stitcher any other podcasting platform hit that follow leave your review without further ado here is the one and only body bags joe pipe all right we are joined by a very special guest one of the most popular guys off of contender series this past summer we are joined by body bags with a z joe piper my dude <laughs> living life how's it going not too bad, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, I love having you on. So first and foremost, is the UFC just letting everyone drive around their cars? Like all the execs, it's like, hey, do you want to drive our car? Go for it. Because I heard you heard you were driving around Dana's car. Yeah, I was driving his Ferrari for a little bit. Uh, no, no, not everybody <laughs> know it. Um, that's what makes it a little bit special. It, it was fun. Um, I'm really big into cars too, man. I'm a car enthusiast. So to be able to go and drive, uh, I believe it was an A12 fast, super fast. It's about 788 horse. It's a Ferrari, so I've, I've never driven one of those, and it was awesome. I had a blast. Is that the fastest car you've ever driven? Uh, no. I actually have a uh, – <laughs> despite, you know, the living conditions in my life, I uh, I didn't sell – like, I didn't sell one of the cars. I, I So I had I had a Corvette, and I traded it for a uh, an Evo, a Mitsubishi Evo 8, and um, it makes about 812 on E85, but – I haven't driven it in a little bit, so got to oh. had to handle some other things before I could actually drive my car. So, what, what, why, why, can't, why haven't you driven it? What's wrong? Is it just not? Was it just did you have to make uh, some more repairs or what? Yeah, yeah, it's it's got some stuff that needed fixed. Um, it, it had like uh, like it was resting up. Like a couple one of the bolt heads were resting up against one of the charge pipes, so it cracked and things like that. So, I had an axle seal leak. Had a couple of things, man. When you make that much power, it's like. You got, you got to take care of it. So, uh, but yeah, no, just to answer your question, nah, it's not the fastest car I've been in, but it was fast. It was fast. You own the fastest car you've ever driven. That's the important part. You own the uh, fastest one. Yeah, so far, so far. <laughs> so far. That's the key word is so far. So let's talk about the career. And real quick, uh, I've heard that you don't really like the B. Joe Piper thing. I heard you say it's kind of cringe, but you're making a little bit of money off it. So it's that bad, is it? I mean, look, hey. It's not that it's bad. It's not bad at all. Look, I'm being talked about. It's good. It's great. But, you know, uh, with this sport, man, you never really have a chance to rest unless you take yourself out of the game completely. So, you know, I, I'm the new guy on the block, right? I come up and, um, you know, I, I got treatment that not a lot of fighters get. And I'm thankful for it. You know what I mean? So, but I'm sure there's a lot of people looking from the side, like, you know, fuck this kid. But uh, it is what it is. Like, you know what I mean? Let me have mine. And this is my story and my journey in the UFC. And, you know, it's not like I'm some kid that's coming in that already had money and, you know, uh, is just trying to butt people out of the way. You know, I'm going to earn my stripes. I don't, I'm not calling out the top 15 guys. I want, I want to get the right fights. I and mean, they make some money first, man. So, um, and this is a career and this is a business to me. So I, I want to fight the fights that make sense. And, um, you know, as, as I fight stiffer competition, I, I want to see heavier money in my pockets. So. <laughs> that makes sense. That's the, and that's the way to do it, too. I mean, you're only 26, too, so you still have a lot of years left in the game. It's not like you're only in here for a couple of years. This is a long-term game. But isn't it just crazy to think about, too, is like this whole situation, you get on the contender series, the card's pretty much ass cheeks. No one's really finishing anyone. It's kind of mediocre. Then you come out there, get the finish. And you just get all this kind of, he's like, all of a sudden Dana loves you just because the rest of the cards ass cheeks. Like, not to put the finish, like, all respect to the finish, but it's like, everything just got exponentially better because you were the only guy to go out there and get a finish, you know? It's just kind of crazy to think about, isn't it? Because then the rest of the card, every other contender series, there was like a finish, like three or four finishes. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, I, I uh, it definitely helps me. Um, 
I think my story in general, I think, helped me just because of being on the contender and breaking my arm. So I think that was the the rock back in there because I had to, bro, that surgery was not just some, like, slap on the wrist. You know, I, I broke the radial head. I ripped the muscle. I ripped the, the fucking tendons and shit. So I, uh, <laughs> and then I got back after six months of recovery, which is some of the worst recovery because it's the type of injury where it's like my arm still doesn't go completely straight. So they're sitting there hanging on it with weights um and shit like that so you know to come back i think i had a story and i think i had a, a better shot than a lot of guys on there uh just because of it maybe but um yeah i mean they all helped me man my, my coaches the whole time they were watching the fights while i was uh either warming up or laying down and they were like nobody's getting finishes you go out there and you start this dude you're getting a contract like there's no fucking way you're not getting a contract we know i mean look man my team's the biggest believer in me right now so um you know I knew that going in there, but I don't stress myself out with that shit, man. I go in there and, um, you know, I, uh, I was pretty scared in my life at that point. Just like if I lost and um, what the fuck was going to happen, this game's very unforgiving. You lose, you know, and they'll, they'll write you off. Like you're, you're, you don't belong. And, um, you know, clearly I belong. And I, the only thing I can say I was butthurt about was, I wish I had a better chance of getting on the video game. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard to have Bo Nickel, three time Division One NCAA wrestler, like coming out there. Like it's, it's hard to overtake that. And then a seventeen year old, and all of a sudden signing in the UFC. Those are kind of hard stories to over to overtake there. Yeah, yeah, that is what it is. But hey, I'm the only one that got my UFC debut in, so I was like, man, shit. Exactly, that's the thing that matters. You got the UFC debut, which, and I mean, like honestly, like all respect to Amadovsky and like everything that he's you have to be good to make it to the ufc did you kind of feel like that was a setup for you a little bit because i mean he has his chin's a little sus and yeah, kind of like the yeah perfect setup for you listen man yeah i mean like i was it a good fight sure um is it a setup i don't i don't to the outside fan that doesn't understand the emotions in this game they're gonna say yeah it's a setup like look is it a good fight for me absolutely you know it's a bad fight for him good fight for me but you know as much as i had an opportunity to go in there and ko him he had eight finishes eight ko's he could have ko'd me so um you know i don't look past anybody man it doesn't matter if they're on a two fight three fight one fight like i just i don't want to look past anybody and get embarrassed on tv you know so i have this thing where it's um, it's one thing to get dominated, but to go out there and get caught, anybody can get caught. But, you know, when you go out there and you get absolutely dominated, that means you got your ass whooped. You got beaten every aspect of this game. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, yeah, it was a good fight. I signed – I took the fight the day after I won my my uh, contender series fight. On Wednesday, I got home to Philadelphia Airport. I signed it in the uh, <laughs> in the airport. <laughs> I thought it was in the gym. What were you? Because I saw a video of you signing something in the gym. What were you signing in the gym yeah, then? That, that was more or less for like the story of. Oh, man. so that was that was made. That was a Mickey Mouse kind of creation yeah, there. That was like a fun like let's just reenact this so that way they have, <laughs> they, they want because they missed the signing. But nah, I signed it in the airport with my coaches. Were you that excited when you signed it in the airport, or was that also kind of a Mickey Mouse creation? Yeah, not yeah. I mean, listen, listen. <laughs> I looked him up in the airport because I was like, oh, a Russian guy or whatever. And he wasn't even Russian. He was Macedonian from Italy. <laughs> and I was like, yo, let's look at it. And I looked at it and I seen him fight John Phillips. And I was like, what? I was like, what? No way. And I was like, I'm taking this fight because I was hurt. So uh, I had like, I, I have elbow issues um, sometimes. And uh, this one was with the one that wasn't hurt. So I was like, man, I'm going to have to take a little bit of time to figure this thing out. Oh, uh, sorry, bro. Oh, yeah, um, man. I just woke up and I'm still tired. The hell? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, uh, I was like, nah, fuck these injuries. Like, I, I'll be good. I can get through this. I, it's, it's, I'm already in shape. Like, let me just ride this. Let me try to make some more money. And it was a money move. You know what I mean? Not even just because of the matchup. It was more or less like I wanted to fight to make money, so that way I could take a little bit of time. Like now, um. I want to I want to travel a little bit, like go to a place and go with Sean Brady to Abu Dhabi. So, um, I'm I'm trying to just decompress myself mentally because I had a fucking hard 21, 22 weeks of just hard two times a day, three times a week, or, or six times a week fucking training. So I just need a little bit of time off. It probably helps too that you got the 50 G's. That helps out a lot when you got those 50 G's on your birthday too. Is it was it is it kind of weird fighting on your birthday? 
Uh, honestly, I thought it would be a little bit more exciting. Like, I can't complain, man. Like, I don't know, dude. It, I'm in this weird stage of, uh, you know, I, I won 50,000, which I'm super ecstatic about, but I'm, um, it, it kind of takes away from the birthday when you're fighting, but you know what? Look, that is my birthday gift. That's the best, that's the best thing I could have gotten because I, I provide for all these other things I've never been able to do. Um, and it's not like I'm spending it. Um, you know, 50 grand is not as much as you think when it comes to, Hey, I got to pay bills and I got to pay electric and phone and car insurance and, you know, for months and months and months, it's, it's, it's a good like years living. Um, uh, but you know, um, I want to be smart with my money and not spend it. So not so, until I, I build up enough to go and invest in something. So no splurge, maybe, maybe helped out with the, uh, what was it? Fuck. I already forget what you have. You have a convertible, not a convertible. What is it? What's the car you have? Mitsubishi Evo Mitsubishi. 8. Yeah, is that, I'm assuming you can put some repairs into that bad boy with the 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put about, I don't know, two thousand, three thousand dollars of repairs into it, which honestly is not that much considering the build. And yeah, I remember I only got this car. I traded this. I traded my Corvette. I gave my, my one of my sponsors bought my Corvette, and then I went and I bought this like one week before. So essentially, it was an even trade. It's not like I went and took money out of pocket for all the people that were like, "How are you homeless and buying cars?" And <laughs> really nice. And, and the situation in which I was about to be homeless is, um, you know, uh, it's unfortunate because it, it was me and my best friend that were living together. And, you know, he fell on some hard times and trying to hurt himself and my living situation three weeks before my fight contender. And then one week before my fight in the contender. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I basically didn't know that we were going to have to split that fast. Um, and that Friday, I was going to have nowhere to live. So it was kind of weird. I, I fought Tuesday. Uh, I won, obviously. Wednesday, I got back, signed the contract. Thursday, I packed all my shit with my team, and they helped me move out. And Friday, I moved into this place. So, And then Saturday, I was flown out to <laughs> Texas uh, by Dana White. So it was, dude, the, the way they're, everything like kind of like just clicked together, it was crazy. That is kind of wild. That is kind of wild. And so what was the, uh, oh my God, I can really space something real quick. I want to ask about the arm real quick. Just completely space this earlier. How have you watched the video of you snapping your arm? Yeah. I will look at the fucking screen in front of my face before I walked out for my second. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've watched it. I've watched it. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. So like, obviously so you still have problems yeah. with it and stuff too. Like how long did you, did you get like uh plates and stuff put in there and then eventually they took it all out or do you still have uh -huh. like, the plates and stuff? No. So I have two screws in there. Um, okay. and that's it. They didn't do the plate because they tried to avoid it because of range of motion. Um, but yeah, no, I don't have anything besides screws in there and the radio had broken pieces. So, um, but they tried to mend it back together as much as possible. Cause if I had a plate in there, there's no shot. It'd be fighting again, probably. Um, at least just for the sake of range of motion, I would look like I have a midget's arm or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I was going to ask cause I broke my, uh, I like had a spiral fracture in my fibia and my leg and I had to get a bunch of screws and stuff put in. So I was just in plates and I had to take all the plates and stuff out. But no, I was just curious about that. But also you have like a plate and like, you throw elbows a little little harder object in your elbows you know yeah well the crazy part with me is like i can turn my hand over right but i can turn my hand over this far and then when you go over i can only go this far oh my god so that's really yeah. long-term effects yeah, yeah 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 definitely and it's like it's uh i get like really bad arthritis pain in it sometimes but mm -hmm. you know um it is what it is like it, it's gonna happen i had a, I have a very devastating injury and then the worst part the worst part about that whole experience man was like you know no, all respect to Dustin Solstice. I like him. I think he's a good person. Um, you know, if I didn't like him, I think it would make it that much worse. But, you know, I think <laughs> he's a good person, like a decent human being. And, um, you know, I, I was a little butthurt at first because, I like, Dana was like, man, he was busting his legs up and the way that fight was going. I was like, I took him down. I outstruck him. I was, like, landing a couple shots on the ground. Like, I was the one leading the dance. Like, fuck, man. Like, I remember being really butthurt about it. And, uh, you know, it, hey. We're all good. We made up for it. I came back. Um, I thought I was going to get an immediate shot. You know, go get another win is what I was told. And I went and I fought uh, Derek Brunson's wrestling coach, knocked him out in the second round and came back, man. So been a long journey. Oh, yeah. And now, again, as you, now you're here and now you're going out to Abu Dhabi. When are you going out to Abu Dhabi with uh, Sean Brady? Uh, I think we leave the 10th or 11th or something like that. I think he fights the 22nd. So you still got a little bit of time then. 
What's that? I said you still got a little bit of time then before you head on out then. Yeah, he wants to uh he wants to get acclimated, so he's leaving out there for a while. I've never been outside of the country, so Really? Yeah, I literally this is all like I've never traveled, I've never been outside the country and <laughs> this will be the first time, so that's crazy. I, I mean, I've only been to Canada, so I can't really be one to speak. I want to go out to Europe, but no, I'm I'm the same way. I've only been to, I've only been go to Canada. To what? I want to go to Switzerland. Oh, I know. I also want to go like Amsterdam, Netherlands, things like that. Oh, there's you can literally well once you go to Europe though, you can go everywhere. It's like all with it's like going to the United States. You can just drive everywhere. Really? I feel that's what I've been told. Oh shit! But you're yeah, talking dude. to a guy who's never been there. <laughs> I, I've been, bro, I, I follow like ex, Explore. Uh, what the fuck? I don't know if this one would make me sound stupid. Uh, uh, oh, I say the dumbest shit. You're good. Is right? Who? It's not. What the fuck would be the word for like people that have uh, like pages that are like traveling? It's not exploration page, right? Uh, I don't know. Explorers. I don't know. Explorers. I, I don't know. But I'd be, I'd be following uh, like Switzerland and shit like that and like Europe and stuff, man. My God, like some of the cliffs out there and Switzerland literally looks like a painted like little village. It's crazy. Uh, I just know. I know. It's like it's it's like kind of because we get we're like you're also you're in Philly, right? Like you, you do you like live in Philly or do you live like outside no. of Philly? Yeah, so I live in Sewell, New Jersey. I live oh. uh, like right outside of Philly. I, I could not live in Philly, brother. I would fucking in jail my laptop fucked up i'm sorry again for like the third fourth time uh my laptop shit on me uh last friday we re released a julian rosa one it literally died on me like i couldn't get the video out until 9 p.m on a friday night so it felt kind of shitty but somehow it was like one of our better downloaded ones i don't know i'll take i'll take it i'll take it but it is what it is let's dive on the ufc vegas 61 though uh shouting out non Mackenzie Dern uh pr not at all what anyone expected not to toot my own horn or anything I did say this would be a split decision I was this close this close Anthony it was a majority decision but I was this fucking close to getting a split decision like I said it would be but uh kind of a disappointing performance for Mackenzie Dern once again yeah I mean she had what nine percent takedown defense coming into the fight so she showed that she still has nine percent or less probably take down uh or not defense but take down accuracy yes, yes, yes. and uh nine percent still probably lower she just couldn't get yao yanon down um i don't know i just i think Dern is one of those fighters who's literally sub or bust like I think, uh, she's yeah. not out striking anybody um she clearly doesn't look like she works on it. I mean, she looks marginally better, but her takedowns don't look better, so it doesn't look like she's working on that either. So I don't really know what she's doing. But Only I mean, yeah, if she if she gets you on the ground, then uh, you're in trouble. But anybody with good takedown defense, it looks like, can stop her. Or you have a good Brazilian with good BJJ who just has, like Marina Rodriguez, for instance, who has good defense. You don't even have to have good offense. You don't even have to be good at it. You just have to be able to defend it. So exactly. I feel like it's like impossible to be just a purely jujitsu person at this point. Unless you're and Yan was defending some too. She defended plenty of attempts. Um there's a couple of guillotines, there's a couple arm bars that were going in there, and she like defended them and she, well, so it's crazy it's just crazy to me how big of a favorite Dern was. And you look at it, she's one and two in her last three now after this loss. And then, really theoretically, though, she should be 0 and 3. Like, yeah, I mean, I thought she lost to Tisha Torres. I thought Tisha Torres won. And it was, this was literally the same fight, but just five rounds. <laughs> That's all it exactly. was. Exactly. And just different refs. Like, yeah. I mean, I think if the refs who refed last night refed the Torres game, fight. Yeah. the Torres fight, uh, go to the other way. I mean, Torres would have won. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's just the same shit, New Day. The same shit. Yeah, exactly. Rinse and repeat. Um, kind of like it's Paul just, Craig. She's kind of like yeah. a Paul Craig or something like that. Where she's she just... the women's Paul Craig. I mean, kind of. Yeah, she's okay. just not as skilled. She, I don't. She doesn't pull guard like Paul Craig will literally like pull you down to the ground and like That's let true. you be on top of him. That's and she true. just started implementing that. That's like she's really struggling with taking like taking like other women down, and Why she not? should go to that style 
More Eminari rules, maybe. Fuck it. Why not? Just go fucking crazy. Because they won't go down underground if you miss. It might take you a minute to get up, but I don't know. Just be stupid with it. Just It doesn't matter. <laughs> they don't want to get on the ground with you. Or even when they did, I mean, John still landed some pretty good ground and pound when they were on the ground. She got into advantageous positions. That's a big word. Um, but no, it's just, yeah, I think she might be the Paul Craig too, but she also is better on the feet than I think the Paul Craig. And that's not really saying a whole lot though. Paul yeah. Craig kind of, if he, if he, if he loses, at least Dern was fighting on to the fifth round and she almost pulled off a sub. I feel like in that like Vulcan fight, Paul Craig was just kind of like turtling up after the first round because he realized he was fucked. And he, no, he was just there. Yeah. He was just like, there. yeah, I mean, Dern, I, I think. From my perspective, at least, it was exactly what I expected. Yeah. I just, she's sub or bust, and when she gets tired, she just throws looping, winging hooks, and... They never hit. They don't hit, because they're easy to see. I mean, I see them from the TV, so I'm sure the, her opponent sees it from... She can right see it. She there. can literally, like, when she's looping, she can probably, like, right here, like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like, Whoop. you know, it's kind of, not gonna touch me but exactly it is, it is what it is it was a fun fight though it was a fun yeah, fight i thought it, it was. was i think um, it was a really good one i agree yeah it was a fun it was a fun women's fight it just sucks now that we're of the five five rounders now four have gone well no that's six sorry of the six the five six. round women's main uh fights five have gone to distance five no. out of six Four out of the six what have the been one, a split decision. What was the one that didn't go the distance? Uh, it was when um, Andra just walked through Amanda Lamos and just arm okay. triangle her on yeah, the feet. Yeah, you're right. That was the one I was thinking, too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was still one of the funniest subs. I was just... She, <laughs> so easy. It was just butter. It just automatic, but it is what it is. Let's move on to Randy Brown, Francisco Trinado. The Randy Brown, six of one now over his last seven. Uh, only loss was Vicente Luque during COVID, and he had a nightmare camp. He's rising. I don't think it was the – he's even came out and said it wasn't a performance he won. It wasn't a performance he wanted to showcase. Um, I was paying attention to the fight. Obviously, all that. I didn't think he was too cocky like he was like in the Chaos Williams fight. He didn't really get into that flow. Um, Trinaldo was just kind of being kind of weird the entire – not weird, but he was just being awkward the entire time, so it was kind of hard for Randy to really get into that zone. Uh, with how Charles kind of mixing in and everything. And then in the third round kind of seemed like Randy just kind of like, okay, I won the fight. I don't care. Yeah, I would agree with most of everything you just said. Um, I don't know. Randy looked like he probably could have done more, but at the same time, you know, played it safe. He seems like he's a decision guy at heart. I don't think he's in there trying to hurt people because he knows that's how you can potentially get hurt yourself. But, I mean, you would hope against a guy of Trinaldo's age that, you know, he could do a little more damage. And well, in the first him. round, he dropped him. And it was literally that's the what time I'm saying. Really like, dropped like this. And then Randy was like, all right, come on, get back up. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I mean. Like, I feel like if Randy Brown actually wanted to, like, turn it on. Like, I want Randy Brown with Chaos Williams attitude. And we have, like, an elite fighter. Because Chaos Williams wants to kill you. He doesn't care if you're 43 or 23. Like he doesn't matter, and but Randy Brown just has he's so he's super talented, and his size and his physique for that division is like really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, he won. He, he, he did call him the Uncle, first two rounds. Uncle Trinaldo too. He's like Uncle Trinaldo. I wonder too if he was in there and like, he didn't want to really hurt him. Exactly. That, that's what it, the, there's potential for that. I mean, he won the first two rounds pretty decisively. And then he just yeah. gave up the third round. 20 easy, 29, 28. And it is what it was. It is what it is. It is what it is. Up next, Randy, I mean, I don't know who they put him up against. Maybe they give him a top 15 opponent. But there's, again, there's a lot of guys in that little range. Yeah. Of the top 15. This was like a massive step back from Chaos Williams, in my opinion. Yeah, so, it didn't like, really make I don't sense. really know what exactly they have planned for him because he, not like he lost to Chaos. Like he beat Chaos and then you can give him Trinaldo. I heard him weird. say he wanted to fight a vet. That's what he said. He wanted okay. to fight a vet because he wanted to fight someone with that experience in the cage to see what it was like to go against a guy with like that kind of experience in all those years. Even though he's fought guys like that, maybe you want to one more with one of those guys before he makes his rise. I don't know. We'll talk to him here soon. Uh, he did say he'd do an interview with us after uh, the uh, the fight. So we need to hear back from him. I know his like DMs and shit are fucking swamped. Uh, Randy Brown in the leech. Ooh. Oh no. 
I mean, um, I like both of those guys, but that's just a good matchup. It's a great matchup, but Leech, you give Leech someone just like he can just starch immediately. I don't know, but I'm, I'm trying to think. There's not so many guys he can just like starch. I think you could kill Nico Price. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, unless you drop down the rankings like a good amount. Like, you got to start. Like, Alex Morono. You smack Alex no, Morono. Actually, Morono would kind of maybe make sense. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't Whatever. Know. We're not on the leech right now. Yeah. I don't know. Poor leech. Just just give him an easy fight. He's had too yeah. many hard fights. I don't care if you move him, if he gets down to the ring, he's a little bit. Just give him a layup and then give him back because he's on a two fight losing streak. So. Um, yeah, he is. Or is he on three now? No, no, no. He won. He won. Never mind. Never mind. I think about the fight. He's on a two fight. Yeah, he beat Muslim. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. That's it for Randy. Let's move on to Randy Barcelos, Trevin Jones. This is where I definitely was wrong. I said, when was the last time Bar- uh, Rayoni actually uses grappling? Uh, he said, okay, bro. And then his grapple fucked Trevin Jones to death. And well, I think he had like a 30, he had two 30-25s. Crazy. Yeah. When was the last had, time we saw yeah. a 30-25? Yeah, because he, he was hurting him. You know, he was grinding him out. And he was also just hurting Trevin Jones. Trevin Jones had no answers for anything. Like, no. nothing. In the words of Izzy, he was frozen like Elsa. <laughs> Literally, though, bro. Like, <laughs> he was. I can't lie. But yeah, I don't know. I, Trevin Jones needs Trevin to Jones go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Barcelos, I mean, he was impressive. What are they, featherweights? They're bantamweights. Bantamweights? I mean, yeah, bantamweights is just stacked. Like, Barcelos is just another player in that division who... I don't know what he'll do, but there's just so many. Keeper. I think there's so keeper. many fucking one thirty fivers, man. That like he's thirty five years old, so like it's not like he's getting a title shot anytime soon. Your gatekeeper is probably just what he is. Right? He's, a, he's, just, he's just a gatekeeper for young guys, even though Trevin Jones shouldn't be gatekeeped after coming off yeah. two losses. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he was trying to get Randy Barcelos back in the win column. I don't know. Whatever it is, um, it was a pretty dominant fight. Uh, it's just like the next one, Sadiq Yusuf, Chinese. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't even need to talk about it. That was what we all expected. It was just him to finish him pretty quickly and get out yeah. of there pretty quick. Yeah, just just rebook him and Giga for like November. Yeah, I'm with it. I, mean, I said it. I said Yusuf round one, call it a day and go on about your night. Yep. I mean, there's no way this, who the fuck, this 31-5-6 man making his UFC debut is going to come in and do anything to Sadiq. I can just... Come on, y'all. Like, that was just obvious. People were overthinking that one. They're like, oh, yeah. he's a wrestler. Maybe he can take Sadiq down some of his wrestling. He's Brothers. 31 making his UFC debut. That's all you have to hear. Unless the dude is like uh, Alex Pereira, who they're like a legit world champion in a different sport, coming over to the UFC as a prospect at 31 years old just means you're not very good. And the UFC needed somebody to fill a fucking fight. They were, Slot. they were desperate. They were desperate. They had nobody to fight. And they're like, who can we get? Because everyone in the UFC is like, I'm not fighting you, Sadiq Yusuf on short notice. On a week? That. Hell yeah, no. They're like, no way. And this guy's like, okay, I'll do it. Of course, because you want to get in the UFC. And good for him. But he saw there's levels to this shit. And he got choked the fuck out by someone who doesn't really choke people the fuck out. So. I, I don't want to say it's on the level of the Sean O'Malley, Chris Moutinho. I think this guy's probably better than Chris Moutinho. Uh, but I'm excited to bet against this guy. His next fight. Mm-hmm. I'm very mm-hmm. excited. This, every one of these guys gets the short notice fights. They always get a follow up fight. The UFC rewards these guys. He's gonna get Maybe a follow up in the more. UFC. Yeah, and then I can't wait to take whoever he fights. Yeah, um, 100%. So yeah, excited about that. Let's move on to our boy, um, who actually, by the way, friends of the program, undefeated tonight. Undefeated that night. Uh, not just across the UFC, but also in Bellator. Uh, I didn't see if JJ Wilson won. I did. Did you even see that? I didn't even watch. No. I did not watch the prelims. He was going to come on the show. I, I got to see if he watches. So I can reach out to him. But uh, Mike Davis, Slava Claus. Uh, biggest question mark was Mike Davis going to use his wrestling, uh, and he definitely did. Um, 30-26, 30-26, and some dipshit gave it a twenty nine twenty eight. Is what it is. But Mike Davis comes out with a big victory, big dub, first fight since January two thousand twenty one, and he looked pretty goddamn good. I thought. Yeah, Problem. he looked good. No jujitsu. No jujitsu. Yeah, he looks good. Um, he didn't really look like he was too dangerous on the ground. Was JJ Wilson did win by a split decision. 
Um, a boy. But, I mean, his his wrestling was good. Slava just clearly has no answer for those little trips. No. Because um, it wasn't even like he was going, like, taking him down all like that. It was just trips, like, and little things. Well, in the but, third round, I think he went for, it was just a standard double leg. But he yeah, got down. Yeah, like, in the third round, he did. Away. At that point, he did. You're right. Yeah. Slava was tired, and then finally, you know. After, I mean, shout out to Mike Davis for relentlessly just going to that game plan, though, because he knew it worked. And I mean, got an easy win out of it, truthfully. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I mean, I'm excited to see Mike Davis fight someone who's a little more skilled, just in all I'm excited to see him of... fight someone who's also not as like awkward on the feet. By awkward, I mean someone who's like his techniques and stuff are a little, it throws you off a little bit because it's not orthodox. Like when yeah. Mike Davis fights a guy who's like more of an orthodox fighter, you see him let his hands fly. We didn't really see him just get to throw his hands a whole lot in this fight, which kind of no, sucks. He again, he has some of the nicest combos. His, one of the, his hands are so fucking fast when he lets it fly. So that was kind of disappointing not to see, but um, it was a smart game plan. It worked. He almost got the finish in the first round. I thought he was going to hammer him out with some elbows and things like that, but it is what it is. He, uh, he looked pretty goddamn good. He should move up the lightweight ladder. Uh, is Dober booked right now? No, he's fighting in two weeks, right? I have no clue. Dude, that would be fun. Yeah, I could not tell you. I wish I could, though. Yeah, Mike Davis, Drew Dober, sign me up. Sign me up. That would be a good ass fight. Up. And then Slava Claus, I don't know. Uh, put him against Medich. Yeah, that was say him against Medich. Yeah, just put him man. against Mike Davis's opponent. <laughs> just run those two. That would be a, that would be fun. I think that would be a very fun fight. It would it's be two prospects fighting for their UFC career because um, they're both coming off two losses. It's kind of obvious Slava can't really defend takedowns pretty like mm-hmm. pretty badly. Even though Davis is a pretty good grappler, and it does seem like Mark Dacesi is now D one. Uh, still, yeah. Slava Medich both have the same problem. I think Medich might be better with the takedown defense in the grappling department. Uh, but still, I would love to see those two fight each other because they both swing and bang, both have power. Um, it would just be kind of a kick ass fight. So that's what I want. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Put him on a prelim for like a pay per view. Mm, easy money. Uh, all right. Let's go on into the prelims. A couple fights we'll talk about. Uh, Charles Oliveira small, Jr., Daniel Santos beats uh, Castaneda. <laughs> I mean, all those guys, it's blonde hair. He fight. I, I literally texted him, like, dude, he literally fights like Oliveira. The same stance, same everything. Yeah. Like, that obviously, when was... guys from the same gym, they look similar. But, like, literally, it was like a clone. Like a small yeah. clone. No, yeah, you're right. He was. He, <laughs> he, look, he looks good, too. He's relentless. He's a really good fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's lucky he had. Well, who was Keith Peterson refing that fight, I believe? Yeah. Cigarettes. He, he, he was lucky Keith Peterson was refing that fight because he did the stanky leg, like, four times in the first round. And uh, he's getting fucking rocked. And so if it was a different ref, that fight could have easily been stopped in the first round. That Castaneda kind of blew his load and uh, gassed himself out. And then Santos obviously took over. And the knee was nasty. Um, but yeah. Body shots on body I shots mean, on body shots. Oh. Impressive by Santos was standing all that. But I do think if it was a different ref, we would have a different results. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time, Castaneda, you know, you, you got to can't blow yourself out like that you gotta no. know that you gotta see like one you gotta know who the ref is and you gotta be aware of those things and two um you gotta see like okay the ref isn't stopping the fight let me chill for a second and let me pick my shots and kick clean power shots instead of just kind of going fucking berserk but yeah it was a good fight it was a good fight. It was a very fun fight. Literally, it is the Charles Oliveira way. From top to bottom, you get rocked really fucking hard in the first round, and then you come back and finish them later on in the fight. It's just kind of the way they work. I wonder that's if that's funny. part of their game plan. Just let the guys gas out on you. Just let them let them have that adrenaline dump, and then you come in for the kill. Probably <laughs> right. Honestly, honestly, not a bad. If you can survive, I don't know. That's kind mm-hmm. of not a not a bad idea, even though you get, take a little pain. Uh, any thoughts on Latifi Olenek? No. Latifi's n- neck too thick. It was just ground and pound. Olenek's 40. Olenek's old. He's, he's like old. 55, man. Cut him. He's done. Get him out of here. Get him out of yeah. here. Even though it yeah. is always funny when he gets a sub. But yeah, it's. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? That, was, that, that fight sucked. That should have been the uh, walk my dog, smoke break. That was mine. Before. That was yours. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That was yours. I wish I could have um silver ronson dude ronson's not the same ronson after. sucks bro yeah he's he needs he's the roids juice. he needs the juice go to bellator and then i'll make another yeah, go to bellator vitamins yeah. are extra extra supreme mm. out there in bellator so. spike carlisle's uh vitamins really helped him out on saturday 
yeah. I've never seen Spark Collateral have life in the third round like that. That was yeah, like, that was crazy. That was pretty crazy. Uh, all right. Actually, this is fun. I do want to talk about Brandon Allen, Christoph Jocko, Brandon Allen. Man, he just gets better. That the the um the sweep he had to get advantage position in the in the first round when Jocko was on top of him, dude. That was so clean. And it was crazy. That was one of the few times too where I've been watching the commentary and they're like, "Oh, he's setting this up," and then he yeah, he did it. it was literally textbook. It was one of the most textbook things. And uh, then immediately got then took advantage of the choke and choked him out. I don't know what else to say other than it looks like Allen's finally starting to live up to the hype a little bit. He is our age. He's twenty six. He's still very young. Um, That's what I keep trying to tell people is the dude's so twenty six years old. Like he's you're not even like they say technically like I, this is in the nba they say your physical prime isn't till basically 27 to like 32 yeah. and so like he's coming like right into that like physical prime of his body per se um if you were like going basketball terms but that's just like physical terms for like the male body for most of, for most people on average so i mean like he's still getting better still learning and I mean, Jocko, I personally don't think he's very good, um, but Allen did. I think did. he's the perfect gatekeeper. I think yeah. he's the perfect gatekeeper. I think Allen did what you do to someone like Jocko, who you're clearly better than. You don't play with him. You just do what you got to do. Get his ass out of there in round one. Collect your check and go home and chill with your kids. Like, Yeah. yeah. I do like the reminder I, of his job. I hate when, uh, his yeah. 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 Yeah, I hate when better fighters – like fight weaker competition and just like make it go three rounds. It's like, bro, you could have got him out of there like so easily. And you like know, Andy Brown have. and Francisco Trinaldo, like yeah, exactly. literally what we talked about already. Exactly. <laughs> like it's just it's frustrating sometimes because I just like watch it. I'm like, why do you want to fight 15 minutes? Just get those guys out of there under five and like your check, go home and chill with the kids, chill yeah. with the fam. Like, yeah. But 15. hey, I'm not them. We're not them. We're not them. We are not. But no, yeah. it, is, it is nice to see our boy Brendan Allen get out there. Shop got hat. 2-0. Yeah, no, big deal. no big deal. Uh, no, but I'm excited for Brandon, man, as he continues to rise. I mean, up next, he he told us he was going to call out. I can say it because he didn't do it. He's going to call out the winner of Drukus Duplices and uh, Darren Till. Yeah. Change, change didn't happen. Though. It's change okay, up. though. It's okay. Well, to be fair, it was a week before, so he had some time to think about it. Maybe he's like, you know what? These are sure. more realistic. Sure. Um, Muniz, very realistic, and I think also that's that would be a fun fight. That would be. That would be fun. And I also I think like that's that. a knockout. That's a knockout, I think, waiting for Brandon Allen. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Chandler Stolarienko. I think that's kind of how we thought it would go too. Either. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised we got the KO, but it's it was funny also- that Stolarienko literally went for the fucking arm bar, like everybody said. Like she <laughs> went for it. She like she had it. She pulled the arm, and Chandler. I mean, she trains with the Diaz bros. Like they're fucking BJJ guys. Do you think yep. you're just gonna go out there and arm bar her? Like you don't think they literally were like, yo, you just watch the arm bar. They trained that with her. Like obviously they did. Because she reversed it real easily and just started beating her ass, but Sterling Aranko, I don't understand how you make it, how you just are so like one dimensional. Like we're I talking about Dern, like she's even yeah. more so, man. Like she's even more so one dimensional. It's literally one sub. It's literally only one submission. There's no chance. Like she only has a sub, and it's a fucking armbar, and it works. <laughs> It works. <laughs> it works. Is that saying more about the lower levels of the uh, UFC women's divisions, or is that saying more about just I don't know? No, that's just low-level fighters in general, man. Level. Exactly. It is. It is about that. Because what was it? I'm trying to think of an example of that. Uh, Guido Canetti and Randy Costa. Well, yeah. Randy, let's talk. Let's just go into Randy yeah. Randy Costa Guido. getting fucking choked out, like bro. You're Dude, cut. They didn't even have Get hooks the scissors, in. Bro. It was all right away. Right Get the away, scissors, bro. Yeah. They, Remember Bro, people like, saying Randy Costa should be fighting Adrian Yanez for the title one day? Like one guy, one day these guys bro. are gonna fight each other in the top fifteen. Oh, you don't understand. like how do you beat? Like, you beat the shit out of Adrian Yanez for five minutes. He had Adrian Yanez probably in the one of the worst positions he's been, other than the Davy Grant fight. And then you get choked out one round by Canetti. What? I mean, you beat Journey Newsom. He beat Journey Newsom. Yeah. What the fuck? By a round one head, head kick, literally two years ago, oh. like almost to the day. Wow. Um, Yanez, yeah, like I said, beat his ass for the first round, lost second, then loses to Tony Kelly after he was beating Tony Kelly's ass for a little bit. Then Tony Kelly withstood that, 
and then Guido, like, you get choked out by Guido Kennedy dog. (laughs) (laughs) This man, Guido Kennedy, hasn't gotten a fucking choke submission Dude, since 2013. Oh, 10 years! Jeez. That's when he was 5 and 1, fighting a 5 and 1 fighter in the Jackson's MMA Series 11. And then also, I think the other crazy thing, it didn't, he, I feel like Costa didn't even try to get out of it. He didn't try to scramble. He didn't do anything. He just got put you in gotta there. You gotta cut that, man. I'm sorry. If I was Dana, I'd be like, you gotta go, bro. Well, he, he has, you know, the one thing he has, though, he does bring in the women's audience. Yeah, I mean, you don't even get to look at him. He's getting fucking finished so quickly. Uh, that's a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. That mustache. You know, I don't like those mustaches. Can I be honest? I'm not a fan of those. Yeah, no, it's fucking weird. I don't like it either. But... <laughs> that was such a passive aggressive. Just like, yeah, I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be a hater. So I'm just gonna. Uh, I'll be a hater. Just gonna, I'll I'm just gonna say I don't like I, it. And keep it the, there is uh, there is a guy I worked with who had it, and I had like always edit out. Well, actually, he just left the company, but I'm not gonna talk. Like he he pulled it off. It worked, but editing it. And trying to cut out the images, and when you have to, you know, you have to cut out an image, you have to like zoom in. Oh yeah, like, pinpointing that fucking pencil mustache, like the, the barbershop mustache, whatever you want to call it, was the most tedious bullshit I've ever done. But man, I'm saying a lot of big words today. I don't know if I didn't take Alpha Brain or anything. I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm trying to use my brain up before I start boxing, so I don't like, you know, use You're up all my brain cells. You know, <laughs> use them up before I lose them. Uh, <laughs> So bonuses, uh, let's go on and dive on into it. My performance of the night goes to Skinny Bets. Uh, Skinny Bets, man, I he has like nine hundred thirteen thousand followers on Instagram, and I've heard of him a couple times because of Randy Brown, but I've never seen him on Twitter. You never see any of his bets unless I think you have to pay for his Patreon or whatever. I've heard he might be a scam artist, Loki, but um, I don't know. Whoever this guy is, never don't have never seen him anywhere else but on Instagram. Uh, and then just like at random UFC events and then being shouted out by like four fighters last night or on Saturday night. So uh, my performance bonus because of skinny bets. Do you know what this guy is? Um, No, I just know fighters always shout him out. Terrence McKinney shouted him out before. Yeah. I mean, I think he's probably low-key a scammer. I'm sure he probably tells fighters to you know, shout me out and I'll pay you X amount of money and he probably just does whatever the fuck he does. I don't know though. I can't tell you what he, what he does or who he is or what. A sports consultant, like what the what fuck he's about. You? I don't know. I feel like you can put consultant behind anything, and you're just like, all right, for sure. It's like so. people being consultants out of college; they just go drink in random cities and don't really do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anthony, your performance bonus. My performance bonus goes to the friends of the show. Um, oh. Everybody put on. Um, I literally have been parlaying them every single week for the past like month now and then this fucking week i just like brain farted it didn't do it and then what happens they all fucking win see so, i bet all of them like individually like it's throughout and i just I was like i don't want to parlay them all together because like i don't also i didn't want to be the, i didn't want to be the guy that parlays them and then they lose and i feel like i'm responsible for it because i do the same thing i usually parlay them all together i'm like no i'm just gonna bet separately see if it works at work but now i feel like a jackass because it was like plus 600 for all yeah, our boys that's the thing is, i just parlay them together because i don't like to parlay so like them. this gives me a reason to just like parlay it for fun because it's yeah. not like I'm not putting any thought process into it. I'm literally just, you know, throwing a couple bucks at the friends of the show parlay. And like you said, it's like plus 600 sometimes. And so if you can get, you know, they're like 10, 15 bucks out of fucking plus 600 plus 800 ticket and you win, you're like, well, that was dope. Like, that and so that's why I do the parlays for that. I mean, if I really like them, yeah, I will do a single bet. But like, if I'm not just like looking into it and I'm just like doing that, but yeah, performance bonus of the night, friends of the show. Just go dumb and just do it. That's what we should just for now on, just blind, blindly do yeah. it, blindly doing it, which it probably won't hit again now until like November. <laughs> so make sure you do the friend of the program fade if you're a dick. But um, no, it's, I was just kind of nervous because all of our boys are like pretty, two of our guys were minus 400. So I was like, oh, yeah. oh, and one of them always loses. And they were both, I think, I think AJ was the biggest favorite on Bellator. Probably. Something and he like didn't, that. he didn't, he should, I mean, yeah, he made it, he made it nerve wracking. 
He did make it nerve wracking, but he put on a show. He dry humped the fuck out of my car. He did. Face. He did dry hump the fuck out of him. That was a little wild. I don't know why he did all that. But he was, I, yeah, I want to know why he couldn't get that choke in. I, I, it was very interesting. That was a very interesting fight. Weird fight. Spike Carlisle. Again, we talked about already. You know, those vitamins, man. Those Bellator vitamins are special. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our fight of the night. My fight of the night is Dan on the media. Um, all week, it was speculation. I was like, why the fuck is there no media? Why are there no fans? Uh, and then it starts getting leaked. It's Mark Zuckerberg. Either he bought out the venue or it's like a partnership. Um, people thought maybe it was for the Oculus. But it's not for the Oculus. Mark Zuckerberg and his wife just wanted to watch the fights themselves. They wanted the whole apex of themselves. Uh, and literally like two days before, they asked Dan at the press conference, hey, Dan, is it true that Mark Zuckerberg bought it out? It is. No, no, no. Sorry. Fuck that. I'm wrong. He tweeted it out. Mark Zuckerberg did not buy out the Apex, you goofs. Two nights later, they take a picture together at the Apex, and there's no fans in the crowd. So, fight of the night, Dana <laughs> against the fans in the media. Uh, for just completely lying to our faces about why yeah. he did it. Just tell us, know like, it's not a big like, deal. Yeah. I don't get why you can't have media and stuff there if Mark Zuckerberg's there. Like, is that something like Mark Zuckerberg's just like, I'm, I am not going to be around media? Like, I don't know. It sounds kind of weird. It's a little strange to me, but hey. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It is weird, and I think yeah, I thought that the whole I get I'm not having fans for Zuckerberg, but not having the media that was yeah, that was a little yeah, weird. that was a little weird. That was actually really weird. It was really weird. I do hope this is not going to become a normal thing too with billionaires. I do hope that's not going to become normal because it's kind of it was just it's not the same. It went back to feeling like it was in 2020 when there were literally no one. Yeah, it was very quiet in there. It's not fair to the guys either. It's, it's like not, they can't like, bring their family and friends in there. And, yeah, that's what I would be pissed off about. I'd be like, "Why? What do you mean? Like, I can't have my like family? Like, because a lot of these people do have their family." And then that's and that's like one of the biggest. That's the biggest complaint about fighting the Apex. They're like, mm-hmm. I don't really like. I can't bring my family and friends in there. I can only bring like a couple people. They couldn't bring anyone. So no, it's it sucks. Tragic. It sucks for them. They can't make money off the Rock. They can't make money off their apparel when they wear into the Octagon. Um, and they can't bring their fans and fa- fans, friends, friends and, and family. family. I used up all my goodwill on big words, and now I can't even say the simplest shit. Uh, let's just mm-hmm. go on and move on to our winners and losers. Uh, my mm-hmm. first winner, we already said it. You gave your performance bonus to them. This is the friends of the program. Everyone won. Uh, it's rare that this happens, uh, and it's also rare that we usually have a lot of favorites. Usually, we have a couple guys who are pretty big dogs. Um, yeah. So maybe it's a good thing Trevin Jones didn't come on the show because he would have ruined the friend of the program parlay. Oh, that's fucking right. You're right, hindsight. Man. hindsight. 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 Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Winners. Friends of the program. Anthony, your first winner. My first winner is the Detroit Lions. Um, I'm a little impressed by them, honestly. Oh. They lost this week, but They're you know, they, they were down by a lot. They didn't have DeAndre Swift. They didn't have Almiron St. Brown. Um, and they still... And they didn't have DJ Chark. And they somehow still put up, what, 45? They, it was like 41. 40, 41. Um, 41 to 45. Yeah, they like 44, 41. something like that. Yeah, something like that. But, I mean, I'm just impressed with the Lions. Like, the offense is humming. They just need some defense. They don't have a defense. But Is Jared Goff the guy? I don't know. I mean, I... He I, might I, be. I, I think he Jared Goff be. is... I don't know. Jared Goff is... I don't know. He, I think he's, he, he's showing he's showing people things right now. He's yeah, showing a couple. Of things. What we've seen the past couple months or not months but years has not been good. But I mean, hey, this year he's looking good. It's looking mean, like twenty nineteen, Jared Goff. Yeah, he's throwing good passes. I mean, dimes. He, he should definitely be in like that MVP talk, low key, like that top. Whoa! Like, yeah, he's Whoa! playing good. Oh, shit. I mean, if you're just saying like we're just taking t- taking QBs, like statistically speaking, he is up there in statistics. He's up there in statistics. People are all falling in love with Tua, forgetting about a bit. Yeah. Big old Jared up in Detroit. Yeah. He can't he can't move, but goddamn it, he can throw a ball. Yeah, no, I agree. I'd, I'd move my fandom over there for a year. I, I after the Colts looked like dog shit week one. I'm like, all right, I'm going all in on the Jameis MVP train. I'm going down to the Saints. They lose. Jameis gets hurt. Um, so I'm just gonna stick with the Colts and not take my good bad will anywhere else. They're bad, even though going to NFL games, I am one to know, no big deal. 
but uh yeah maybe it's my fault <laughs> the Colts lost I don't know maybe it is maybe it is um so my next loser uh I've already kind of said it is Dana White purely just for what he said about Mark Zuckerberg just not telling us just lying to everyone about it all week uh and just continually being a massive liar and not telling anyone the truth when end of the day why why yeah, lie? Why? it's not that big of a deal or it is to some people, but for most of us, we don't really care that much. It's yeah. kind of shitty to the fighters, things like that. But again, not to re- go back into that conversation. We already had it. We already talked about it. Still, why? Who cares? Just do it. Who cares? Just say it. Doesn't matter. Anyway, Dan White, big loser. Um, Anthony. My loser goes to the NFL and the doctors. Oh. Is they got a, I mean, they have just a history of having players messed up, you know? They just prescribe them painkillers and whatnot and try to keep playing even though, you know, you have like a fractured spine or some crazy shit or they're just like, whatever. Um, but this specifically is just talking about Tua. Tua clearly had a concussion on Sunday. Um, you don't have to be a doctor to tell that. He got up. He hit his head hard, was holding his head. He got up. He started stumbling. He fell. and was very wobbly. Like what else do you think that happened? And then they let him play. And then clearly on Thursday got even more hurt. And now he's probably going to be out for, I mean, you would think the season, the way that he was looking, Um, but who knows? So, but that's really on the doctors. That's on the NFL. Um, Sure. You can blame Tua too. Like he knows what his body is, but at the same time, like these guys get paid, they get paid weekly for every game that they play. Um, I think you get paid when you're hurt too, but still. You get paid if you're hurt. But they, these guys are tough and they want to play. And Same I thing happened know. to Chris Godwin yesterday. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah, same shit. It happens every week. Just the two of thing was so gross. Now everyone's yeah, paying attention. Yeah, because it was with the it. brain. I think because yeah. it was like the brain that was like so. Because it's yeah. like puts it more into perspective when it's like. Yeah. You can like paralyze yourself type shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It happens all the time. It does. Ha- it happens a lot more than you think. Uh, Colts yeah. were pretty quick to put Shaq Leonard on the sideline. Um, yeah. yeah. So they, they're, you know, we do something right. Colts <laughs> do something right. right. Um, but yeah, NFL, t- it's always tough optics. But here in about, what, like two weeks, we'll be focused on something else the NFL did. And then, kind of, oh, right. when Deshaun Watson comes back, that's when we'll be back. That's when we'll be complaining about that. That's what's next. Yeah, we got about seven more weeks, six more weeks. Oh, uh, we'll all be some more storylines. Maybe, I don't know. What's no, yeah, you're right. Work? You're right. I don't know. But we, I'm just saying it's still like six weeks away. No. That's six weeks away. So yeah. we'll, be, it's, it's coming. we'll get a new storyline. But the, the Tua mm-hmm. thing, it sucks. I don't think anything's really going to change on the NFL. It's 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 kind of shitty to say. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just it's how the it NFL is. works. That's how the shield works. Yeah. As shitty as it sounds. Yeah. It's, it's shitty. I hate saying it, but I wish something would change, but it's just not going to. All right. My next winner uh, more lighthearted note uh, goes to Lamar Jackson. I know they lost to the Bills, is what it is, and they went four and fourth down. John Harbaugh is being called for his job. By the way, Ravens fans, you're fucking stupid if you want to fire John Harbaugh, but it is what it is. That's not why that Lamar Jackson's call, a winner. Though. Yeah, I also kind of makes. Did you hear what he said though about it? He says, I it makes sense to me because Josh Allen, their Bills were getting hot, and if you kick a field goal, then Josh Allen comes down, drives down your throat, and then scores a touchdown, which they would have scored a touchdown if they wanted to. Um, I think that was the whole thought process is Josh Allen's going to skull fuck you. And then he'd be like, why didn't you go for the touchdown? Because yeah. I mean, Josh I Allen guess. was humming. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I think you just give your defense the lead and pray that they can. Well, they haven't been able to hold that anyway. No, they haven't been able to. So, uh, I mean, I understand him. Like, you don't really trust the defense, but I, I don't know. Anywho, uh, continue. Anyway, Blue my race. winner goes to Lamar Jackson because uh, he is no longer the only – not only was did he uh, go to the bathroom by himself allegedly, um, DK Metcalf had to shit so bad he had to get carted off. Um, so he actually came out and said it too. So maybe Lamar Jackson's a little bit of a loser for not admitting that he had to go take a dump. But DK Metcalf was just like, dude, the, the pinch walk would not have worked. Uh, I needed to get carted off. To go use the restroom. In there. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out Lamar Jackson because he's no longer the only person to be go viral for having to take a dump. So uh, yeah. shout out Lamar. Shout out DK Metcalf, also a big winner. He owned that so well for having mm-hmm. to take a dump in the middle of the game. Dude, I just don't remember when every time I play basketball or do anything, I think taking my body just automatically forgets I has to use the bathroom. I'm just so focused and dialed in. No, yeah. like... 
I don't know. Maybe maybe the, maybe you drink some coffee at halftime or something, and it's kind of it's going through a system. You know, maybe some caffeine. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like that, that. I mean, I guess it just hits you. But uh, yeah, like you said, who my body is not sitting there thinking like bathroom during big intense moments like that. <laughs> like in the NFL, like it's like I'm, yeah. I'm like playing my pickup. I'm like not thinking about taking a shit. I'm never thinking about taking a shit or even a piss. And all of a sudden, like boop. They were up pretty big too. Guys, yeah, they played the Lions. Yeah, they were up pretty big. So it was probably one of those things where he was like, "Ah, oh, it is what it is. I'm gonna take a dump." Then he gets back, and they're only up ten. So right, uh, he was like, "Damn, how long was it going for?" God damn, that was a long ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Anthony, your winner. Uh, my winner is uh, the NBA is back. Oh, so yeah, we got we got preseason basketball right now, but I'll still watch preseason basketball because it's fucking basketball, and mm-hmm. I like basketball. I've been watching baseball for the past couple months, so boy, I, am I happy. Baseball's dead to me now. <laughs> like, boy, am I happy to watch some some basketball. I will still watch playoff baseball because I think there's money to be made in playoffs just because it's like any other sport. I mean, baseball is a little volatile. Not volatile, but baseball Once you get to the playoffs, playoffs, it's a little, little you know, you just get who's hot. It, exactly. It's who, what team is hot, and you can kind of ride that hand. But, yeah, I'm just happy basketball's back. NBA's back. Did you see the Suns lose to the 36ers? Yeah, I did. The Australian Basketball League. I did. Like the bottom tier of the of the league. Yeah. That's a tough scene. That's tough, a scene, tough scene, man. Tough scene. Is, like, obviously preseason, all that, but still, the bottom of the barrel players in the NBA should steamroll yeah Australian basketball league team 100% oh no did it has body Williams lost a locker room I don't know uh <laughs> no, no they'll be they'll be fine they'll probably still be no. the top three seed um even though John Drayton probably will be traded Jane whatever that day is the dead like the day he can finally be traded he's gonna be traded the next day oh I believe it there's no way fuck I the Suns by it. the way taking John Drayton away from me never forget that like three yeah. days I had where we had DeAndre in the Indianapolis Pacers. I'm so happy. <laughs> they got better at the bathroom, but man, we had DeAndre. We actually did something for once. Yeah, right. You actually, you're in the you're a headline. <laughs> yeah, we were a headline for the right reasons, not Victor Oladipo telling Heat players, get me out of here, or Paul George yeah. wanting to go to LA, or um Lance or Stevenson bullying Roy Hibbert because Paul George fucked Roy Hibbert's fiance. Just all these other things, all these other headlines. Damn, yeah. Oh. Pacers love making terrible headlines. All right, so speaking of losers, uh, my loser is Bellator. Um, they this have is a joint loser right here. This is yeah, this is the first ever program history. Bellator joint. Oh my god, my light went out. Wow, that's a that hasn't happened in months. Uh, <laughs> but a uh, loser, Bellator. Bellator, man, they have this card. You look at the you look at the matchups. You're like, this is a fun card. This will be sick. You get to it. Aaron Pico probably the has such an interesting story. Add another chapter to that list. His like shoulder gives out. They try to put it back in place. Doesn't get into place. AJ McKee, Spark Carlisle. I will say probably the most fun fight of that main card. It was just very uh, eventful. I think that's the way to put it. It was eventful. And then Patricia Pitbull uh, and Adam Borks went to a decision. Just another Pitbull performance saying Dana White's a pussy for not coming out and signing him. Uh, but also because he can't draw a fucking like league of people to watch him. So it is what it is. But yeah, Bellator, big loser. Yeah, they're a big loser for me because one, Aaron Pico, that fight, just shoulder injury, whatever you want to call it. Just bad. All he, around. Ran, he also ran out of the cage. That was a tough scene. Yeah. That was like Colby that. Covington vibes. Yeah, there's that, which is just kind of scary behavior. Um, then you have AJ McKee, Patricio Pitbull, who theoretically should win this fight. And you would hope finish these guys if they are as good not finish them but put on like absolutely dominant performances and i guess pitbull he did put on a pretty good dominant performance but mckee it was dominant but it was like he should finish them if you're gonna yeah, be exactly. out here, if you're calling out volkanovsky saying he'd be volkanovsky yeah you come on bro. It, it's, that's my point like you gotta you're out here talking about you're the goat of the featherweights well buddy you better act like it because the real goat of the featherweights is whooping ass so and then aj mckee i mean I don't know. It was a good win. Spike Carlisle, good vitamins. But Great overall, vitamins. I just think like the card is hyped up always, but the fights, like they just don't give us finishes. Like I'm looking right now, like there are so many fi- just decisions and Bellator decisions are like 
boring fucking fights. Well, terrible because the the discrepancy in talent is just disgusting. Yeah, and so it's like it's not like the UFC where you get like a banger of a fight and it's a decision. You're not getting Mike Davis and Slava and Slava. You're getting just you get yeah. a legit layer to the Tifi and uh, Alexi Olenek. Yeah, like I saw they literally like you're just getting guys you've never heard of like. One of the women's fights. One of one of the women was two and five. Like, how was she in Bellator and she's two and five? <laughs> Bro, the UFC wouldn't even look at you. That's what I'm saying. Like, you have a losing record. Like, another person on the card was one and two. Like, how are you in the Be- how are you in Bellator and you're one and two professionally? Dude, that's Bellator. That's what I'm saying, Bellator, Bellator man. Bellator. It's just one of those things that it's like. Uh, it's just, it just it hurts. It hurts. Conspiracy theory, right from my conspiracy theory. So, have you heard about the lightweight Grand Prix? Bellator is kind of thinking about mm-hmm. doing. I think that's them trying to get uh, AJ McKee to stay in the uh, in the uh, organization. Probably. I mean, it's hard to even find the shit. Oh god, yeah, we've we've gone on for that. It's still they just just fucking do a deal with like Fox or something. Fox yeah. doesn't have anyone in MMA. Like, dude, they'll probably do it. They have their own streaming service. Like. Yeah, they can probably so many... do paper. They do pay per views with boxing with Andy Ruiz. They did the Andy Ruiz fight, so yeah, they they can do it. Just get out of Showtime. Just go somewhere else. Even I feel like if you did HBO, it would be make more sense. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't know. I don't whatever. know. Bellator, That's enough figure Bellator. Your, figure your shit out, Bellator. I bet weighing in is going to be like, what a great show, great card. Um, Patricia Pitbull would he would whip Volkanovski all over the octagon. But Dana White's too much of a pussy. You'd go out there and demand it. No. Madness. No. Madness. John McCarthy, man. <laughs> John McCarthy. All right. That's my conspiracy, but I still think AJ, I think AJ McKee's on his, has one foot out the door of Bellator. I think he's. Yeah, 100%. I, yeah, it's, they're not going to give yeah. him a title shot because of it. And that's why he probably, well, that's probably what he fought like a Spike Carvel. He's probably going to get one more lightweight fight against, I don't know. I don't even other know, Pitbull. man. Because the other Pitbull's yeah. going to lose to the, uh, the Mega Medoff. And then we'll see AJ move over. So yeah, that's what it is. I can't wait to see AJ in the UFC. But it is what it is. All right, that's what we got for the show. Uh, we'll talk to you guys on Friday. No UFC event this weekend, so just chilling, talking shit. Probably talk a little NFL. Probably talk more NBA. Probably I'll have a couple trades happen here soon. Cause I guess there's some trades in the work. So uh, see you guys on Friday. See you. See you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me all the way to the end. Uh, I just want to once again thank the sponsor of the show, Living.Fit. If you're looking to better yourself, make sure you go to download the app or visit the website, Living.Fit today.